This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. This video demonstrates data entry using a CS Pro data entry system. This demonstration uses the data entry system prepared in the earlier demonstrations for the baseline survey questionnaire and shows how to use this system for entering data. To open the system, locate and double-click on the file baselinesurvey.enc, which is the compiled CS Pro data entry application. This asks us for a, a data file, and we will choose baselinesurvey.dat. By default, the data file will not have an extension, and, but we recommend that you always put an extension of .dat, and this you will need to type yourself. Click open and allow CS Pro to create this file. Enter your name as the operator ID. Note whenever you start the data entry application, you will be asked for the operator ID. And CS Pro keeps a log of who has entered data and when. As the data file currently has no cases, you will be taken into add mode, ready to add data from the first questionnaire and the first screen is now shown. The cursor should be flashing in the village code field. We enter the village code from the questionnaire, which is 01. Note if we complete the field, as we did here, we entered a 0 and a 1 and hence two digits, we automatically move to the next field, i.e. the household number. If the current field is not complete, you will need to press enter to move on. The household number is 1, so let's demonstrate that by just typing a 1. And then we need to press enter to move on to the sex field. Once you have completed a field and moved on, it will turn green. The questions for sex and age of the respondent are shown as option boxes on the questionnaire, but there is no provision for option boxes in CS Pro. For these questions, you need to enter the appropriate numeric code. These are single digit codes, so be aware that you will automatically move to the next field when you enter the code. So we enter the numeric codes for sex and age according to the ticks on the questionnaire. So in this case, this is male and middle aged. Note, if you make a mistake, you can move back to the previous field by pressing shift and tab and as you move backwards, the fields turn to yellow. The next two item, items for household size and number of economically active people in the household are both two-digit fields. As with the village code and the household number, if we enter two digits, we move on automatically. Otherwise, we need to press Enter. The values for household size and number of economically active people on this questionnaire are three and one respectively. So we enter three and then we enter one. After entering the number of economically active people, CS Pro moves on to the next page. Note that Shift Tab will take us back to the previous page in this instance. Question 2A on the questionnaire consists of four checkboxes where we expect a tick if the item is a source of income and the box to be left empty otherwise. CS Pro has no facility for checkboxes on data entry forms, so these have been converted to numeric codes and we are using a 1 for a yes and 0 for no. So for each of the sources of income, we will enter a 0 if the box is not ticked and a 1 if the box is ticked. On this first questionnaire, the only tick is in salary for, from employment, so we enter zero for the other three options, and we enter a one for salary from employment. Note that these are single digits, so we move on automatically after entering the digit. The income fields in question 2b have been programmed with automatic skips and default values of minus 88, 8.88. This code is being used to indicate not applicable, i.e. this is not a source of income. These items have been set up to allow four digits before the decimal point and two digits 
after. On the first questionnaire, the only source of income is salary from employment. And you should find you skip automatically to the fourth row in question 2B. So we enter the value for the income from salary, which is 450.32. The default value shown originally will disappear as we start to type. You must enter the decimal point, and as there are two decimal places, you'll move directly to type of ward. Note the fields that have been skipped will be in yellow. For type of wall, roof and floor, we enter the values as given on the questionnaire. In this case, it's three, three, two. These are all single digit fields. We next enter the number of rooms, bearing in mind this is a two digit field, so we may need to press enter to move on. And indeed, this is uh, number of rooms is five. We need to press enter to move to kitchen. Kitchen, pit latrine and bath shelter are numeric codes. So we enter the appropriate codes corresponding to the ticks on the questionnaire. So we enter one, one, two. After entering bath shelter, we move on to the next page where there is a table for the economic activities. The system has been set up with a maximum of seven activities per questionnaire or per household, but most will have less than seven. The first questionnaire has just two activities. So in the first row, we enter the first activity, which is activity number 24. The next five columns are check boxes, similar to those we had for sources of income. So we enter the data in the first row, entering a zero when the box is not ticked, or a one if it is ticked. Once we complete the first row, we move automatically to the second row. We enter the second row in the same way, bearing in mind that activity code is a two-digit field, and you will need to press enter if you only enter a single digit. So we press eight, and then press enter. Once we've entered both rows of data, we need to tell CS Pro that we have finished entering rows. And we do this by pressing Control and a forward slash. As this table is the last item in the questionnaire, this completes the entry for the first questionnaire and CS Pro will ask for confirmation that you want to accept this case. So we click on yes. CS Pro will save the case and you'll see this added to the list on the left hand side of the screen as shown. You are then taken back to page one and shown a blank data entry form ready to enter data from the next questionnaire. We'll start to enter the next questionnaire and we'll make some mistakes along the way to show you what happens. The next questionnaire is for household two in village one. We'll enter the one for the village. But when we come to enter the household, let's see what happens if we enter a one. Remember the previous questionnaire was for household one, so this should give a conflict. And indeed, CS Pro recognizes that this is a duplicate and gives an appropriate error message. <laughs> Press F8 to clear the message and correctly enter two for the household. We next enter two for the sex, and without thinking, we press enter. This gives an out of range message. Sex, we may remember, is a single digit field, so we don't need to press enter to move on. And the system did not like the blank that would then be in the age item. Press F8 and enter the age code, which is four. The system has been designed with a check to make sure that the number of economically active people in the household does not exceed the household size. The household size here is five. And let's see what happens if we specify six economically active people. The customized error message tells us that there are only five people in the household. Again, we press F8 and enter the correct value, which is one. An important point to note here is that you must watch the screen so that you are aware of what's happening and where your cursor is. On page two of this questionnaire, we find that bath shelter is missing. If we press enter to try to skip over it, we get the out of error message that we saw earlier. 
The recommended course of action here is to have missing value codes for each item that you can use in these situations. The data manager should have set these up and told you what they are. In this example, the missing value code is 9, so we enter 9 and move on. Let's use Shift and Tab to move back and confirm that we did indeed enter a 9. When designing the data entry system, there is an option to allow partial saves. This allows you to stop partway through the entry of a questionnaire and return later to the same position. Let's try this. We click the Stop button on the toolbar and choose Partial Save. The current case is saved, but if we look at the list of cases, we see this particular case as an indicator to say that this is a partial save. In the next demonstration, we will show you how to finish entering this case. Note if you've not started to enter any data, the stop icon will just take you out of add mode. To finish, we close the application in the normal way. There are several points to note here. Firstly, if you completely fill a field, you will automatically move to the next field. Secondly, you can use a partial save to save a questionnaire partway through and come back later to the same point. Use control and forward slash to finish entering in a subtable or roster such as the activities table. Use shift tab to move back to the previous item or screen. And most importantly, watch the screen during data entry so that you are aware of error messages and the position of your cursor.